Thank you very much. In uh, 2013, in light of the fact that we had a number of military returnees coming back to the United States with traumatic brain injuries and post-traumatic syndrome, we began working with a team of people with the Wounded Warrior Program and a number of military sites across the country. The military has protocols. These are all active duty soldiers still in the process of recovery. So we don't have data on these people because they're not research subjects. The military is very explicit saying we cannot do research on active duty soldiers. So what I'm about to tell you is based on the information from that and what we have in terms of reports one-on-one -on -one from them as they go through it, and then some data that might explain why the positive results we've seen have been happening. Okay. The nervous system basically has three major components. It has the central nervous system, obviously the brain and the spinal cord. It has the peripheral nervous system, which are all the major nerves of the body. And then it has the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system lives at a couple places in the central nervous system. It lives in the brain stem and in the sacral cord area, presacral area. So anyway, the autonomic nervous system has two components, the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system. And together, they act spontaneously without our thinking about it to regulate nearly all of the subconscious functions that keep us alive. Breathing, respiration, heart rate, gastroenterologic function, a bunch of cognitive functions. So it's a really important piece to have operating well. The sympathetic system functions are very interesting. They're really designed to come on board within milliseconds. They act very, very quickly. They're the first system that are active, the it is the first system that's active in newborn infants. For the first six months of life, infants really don't have a parasympathetic system. They have a sympathetic system. So they cry if they're unhappy. What you are feeling now, as you look at the picture of the rattlesnake in an attack pose, if I were to have measured each of your heart rates I would have seen a response. If I were to look at your muscle tension, I would have seen a response. If I would have looked at your blood pressure instantaneously, it would have gone up. It increases heart rate forcefulness and rate both. So that system is called the fight or flight system. It prepares you to escape the dinosaur or the lion, or whatever. Or, if you're in a battlefield mode, it prepares you to get the hell out of the way of bad stuff happening. The parasympathetic system acts in contradistinction to essentially calm down and control the impact of the sympathetic system. It essentially permits this cow to sit quietly chewing its cud and not running away from danger. It allows the gut to work functionally. It allows the respiratory system to function in a relaxed manner. It lowers blood pressure, and it calms the brain activity. <clears throat> it's a slow response system, much, much slower, within minutes rather than milliseconds. And I'm sorry that the initial cow doesn't go away. Anyway, it controls anxiety, it controls a whole bunch of other brain cognitive functions. 
Anxiety disorders and PTSD are caused by chronic overactivity of the sympathetic nervous system. It trains itself over time to be faster and more efficient. And so what happens in PTSD is that the system is operating on a hair trigger on an ongoing basis. Chronic overactivity of the sympathetic nervous system is associated with a great number of chronic diseases. It produces an inflammatory response and inflammation is really felt to be the mother of most chronic diseases, including hypertension, cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's associated with premature death and heart disease, all of which are seen in folks with PTSD. Immersion produces an important effect on the autonomic nervous system. It produces a balancing of the two systems, and that leads to anxiety reduction and mental relaxation. It produces an improvement in mood state. It reduces mood state disorders like depression. So immersion, just by itself in warm water, has a very positive effect, and it also changes a bunch of cognitive functions, including increasing working memory, cognitive task performance, creative problem solving, and cognitive flexibility, and creates a feeling of overall well-being. It's what accounts for your sinking into a hot bath at the end of a bitch of a day and going, ah. Oh that and a glass of wine. So what happens with chronic activity, overactivity, in water is really powerful. It produces an autonomic nervous system effect, and it also does a bunch of things within that effect to create a feeling of wellness, health, and relaxation. And in our military, folks, what we've seen is a reduction in acting out, what we've seen is a reduction in medication requirements, an improvement in sleep pattern, and a general overall feeling of well-being. So in summary, happy brains are indeed all wet. Thank you.